Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you about timer control. Now, this is the timer and I'm referring to is not a custom one, but rather the one that comes directly from the engine itself. So in, under the game progression control timer, uh, I'm gonna we're gonna explore it a little bit since we never covered any of this uh, before. And I had a special request by one of your viewers if I could do a tutorial about it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. All right, so let's get started. All right, so what I have in mind for today's tutorial in order to show you a little bit more how to use a timer is uh, we're going to have this little button over here that the player will press and that's what's gonna do is gonna activate a timer and give uh, about 10 seconds the player to cross over that door once the timer will reach its end then the door is going to close behind them and the timer uh, will stop entirely so um how can we do this so it's, it's really not that complicated uh what we're gonna have is a timer manager inside our event over here it's gonna be parallel uh actually no never mind that it's gonna be action touch we're also gonna have a new page which is when the timer itself is going to get activated so it's gonna be an auto run what's gonna do is we're gonna go under the control timer it's gonna start one uh for 10 seconds essential okay now what happens is that uh once it started the timer, we're also going to activate a new page once again. So new page, self so switch B and parallel. What we're going to do is that we're going to check under a conditional branch if the timer is smaller or equal to zero. Now, the reason why I do that inside a new page is obviously that if I was to do it here, what would happen? Is that it will check the condition and then it will restart the timer at 10 seconds and then it will check the condition and we would have an infinite loop where our uh, timer would get stuck now if you're using common events rather than events itself in order to manipulate your timer one of the cool things you can do is, is uh, either create a switch that says that the timer uh, has been started to prevent to reset uh, hit to default value so yeah use switches uh, a real switch in order to uh, not uh, restart the timer if you're using common events for your home purposes so the timer is going to check if the it's reached zero at which point it's going to deactivate uh our door so i'm going to use it with the one line of code to um control the mall which is game self switches almost forgot what it was <laughs> so set value um, 56 id2 i think it's the a i'm not sure i have to double check set it false that is gonna shut down the door and i'm also gonna need to shut uh deactivate the switch that's been pressed as well so basically what we do is this over here oh it's seven three my bad so gonna deactivate the door also the main switch that opens the door so like when we press it we activate the cell switch a once the timer will run off we're gonna deactivate it um the same will happen for the door here so it activates the door cell switch b is open so uh yeah and then at the end of the timer i'm actually gonna activate cell switch c instead all right so instead of deactivating a so c it's gonna be true all right okay so all we have left to do is that when we uh, this is pretty much it except that we need to activate uh the time manager so basically what happens is that the character will press the button here it's gonna trigger the door over there the self switch a inside the self switch a before trading the self switch b and move back the camera to the hero actually right after that what i'm gonna do is game self switches once again um so 56 the id is 4 a gonna be set through 
Oops, I forgot. Dot set value. All right. And so, okay. Activate the bottom, opens the door. The door opens, activates the game manager and uh, the timer manager, I'm sorry, which will start our timer. And then it's going to check and wait until the timer reaches zero before resetting all both values at the end. So let's test this. And there's probably one more thing I'm gonna have to do, but that's really about the only thing you need to know about timers. So press the button, open the door, then the timer starts. So I have a few seconds before crossing that door. Uh, I'm just gonna let it run out. So 10 seconds, and then it shakes. And I created a permanent loop. What the hell happened? Let's see here. So, yep. A, B, C is stopped. All right. That should be the one. Something is happening. Oh, I see what's up. Yeah. Uh, and then I need to, uh, of course, deactivate cell switch. B is off and A will also be off. All right. And now, uh, for those that didn't notice, I'm going to run it again. But essentially what happened is that uh, even if the timer reached zero, the problem is that it remains on the screen. And that's super annoying. So, timer runs. Hey, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Come on. I'm going to remove the perma loop. Hopefully. There we go. But now I can cross over, but the timer still remains on the screen. Now, the reason as to why that it remains the case is because you didn't stop the timer itself. And that's something you need to do. If you want it to remove from the screen, you have to uh, set the control timer operation stop. If you don't do that, then the timer will stay on the screen. Now, the only, also one thing to consider is that uh, once I cross the door, I'm probably also going to want to stop uh, the timer itself. Because if I cross the door before the timer ends, then let's just stop the timer anyway, because the, chair, the hero uh, uh, basically managed to complete the challenge. Uh, if you want the door to close anyway, then you can just uh, disregard that part entirely. Alright, so let's cross the door. And boom, the timer stopped door remains open no problem here the only thing i don't really like about this here is that the timer manager gets stuck um at the uh page b so it's always going to check if the timer on a parallel process is going to be uh, stuck or not so that's something i'm not particularly fond of so i could run another uh, game self switch to turn it off but meh doesn't matter that much to me so yeah, but that's just something to keep in mind that it's always going to get stuck on this page anyway. All right, so that's really it for the timers. There's not a lot to cover here. So essentially, you have your conditions to check uh, where the timer is at uh, under the conditional branch. So where is it? Where's my conditional branch? There we go. So I could also shut the door before, like the, if I run under five seconds or like five minutes and whatsoever. And once you want it to disappear from the screen, you need to click on the stop uh, option. I don't really play with the control timer because I feel like the options in there are very, very, very limited. What if you wanted to give additional time to uh, the players because they hit a checkpoint or something like that? These are the kind of stuff that you cannot do with the timer from scratch inside RPG Maker MZ. Which is why I really don't use it. I rather create my own, and I'll soon make a tutorial about how you can create your own timers to give you absolute control and power uh, to do pretty much everything you want. And it's not that hard, really. All right, so that's already it for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe for more content. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to make your own special request on a video tutorial you'd like me to do, please make sure to leave them inside the comments as well. And as always, I'll see you later for a new video. Bye. Goodbye.